This conference will now be recorded. Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the woo, April 20th, 2023 edition. We've got Jason, Kevin, and Robin online, no doubt to be joined by a few others, but not too many others because today I was so busy this morning, I forgot to send out my text message reminder. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyways, the brave and the bold have joined us. Um, I want to talk to you for just a couple minutes uh, about seeds, and then we'll share stories and wins and problem contracts and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I had an experience last night I haven't had in five years, and, uh, and I want to tell you what I learned about it. So last week, I got a call from some old neighbors in a neighborhood I lived in. Uh, we left in 2017, I believe. So it's been quite a while. And uh, they said they were thinking about moving up, buying another house, and would I come talk to them about selling their house? So I sent them some comps. Um, they were curious if they were gonna have enough money to buy a new house. So I did um, their uh, walk away money for them, their seller net sheet. They liked all that stuff. So I went and met with them last night. And of course, the question I always ask you when you're talking about a new client or a transaction is, where did they come from, right? Where did you meet them? What is the source of the business? I'm always curious about that. And so I had to ask myself last night, you know, it's been five years since I lived in this neighborhood, five years since I've marketed this neighborhood, uh, you know, and I had never met these people before. Um, even though they're former neighbors, they were a couple blocks away and we didn't know each other. I said, where did you find me? And they said, Frank, we've had your business card in our kitchen for years. And I said, it must be a Remax business card. And they said, yep. I said, well, that was two companies ago, <laughs> but they had, they had held on to it. So. And I, I thought about how could they have gotten a business card? If it was a postcard, I know how that's delivered. And I postcarded the neighborhood every month um, or a flyer or a brochure, but a business card they could only have gotten through my door to door deliveries. Uh, about once or twice a year, I'd go door to door with a plastic bag with all kinds of goodies in it, including a business card. And I don't know if they still had my jar opener or my chip clips or anything else, but they had one of these little seeds that they had held on to. And it just, it reminded me again, how powerful it is uh, when we consistently prospect and we leave physical reminders of our presence and our desire to help people with their real estate needs. And it could have been a postcard. It could have been a brochure. I've been into many homes, back when I was actively selling where they would have my postcards uh, on the refrigerator or because I would send out recipe cards. So <laughs> it wasn't just my pretty face they wanted. Um, uh, or they would open up a file. They're particularly older people, not to be prejudiced, but they would be so proud of this. They would open up a file and show me every postcard I had ever sent them or every community update, every flyer. They just had stored all of this for the someday when they might need it, or if they just wanted to track trends in the neighborhood. So Kevin, I know that you were with me. I think when we heard for the first time that the business of a real estate agent is to talk to people about real estate, right? Yeah. That's what, that's what we do. If somebody says, Hey, what, what do you do? I talk to people about real estate. But what I want to add to that this morning is we need to leave reminders of those conversations, physical reminders, business cards, flyers, brochures, something, tangible reminders, jar openers, chip clips, pens and pencils branded with our name on them, particularly if we're geo farming. And this was a geo farm lead that came back to me um, after well, it would, it was a Remax card I left there in 2017. So it was at least six years old. Um, 
but these things these things are powerful. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna reverse that on you, and then we'll open it up for discussion. Um, because what I normally emphasize when you talk to people, when you have these real estate conversations, is that you get their contact information, that you take control of the communication loop, you put them into your world, and now you can consistently reach out to them with all of your marketing efforts if you have their information. You don't want to simply depend on the fact that they have your card, that they're going right. to follow up with you. But nevertheless, it is still important that the communication loop be sealed up in both directions. You get their contact information and you give them some tangible way to remember you or contact you going forward. So there we go. That's what I'm passionate about today and want to emphasize today. Tell me what's uh, going on in your business, good, bad, otherwise. Have you had any sticky situations this week? Any big victories? Let's talk about it. All right, Kevin, you're first up. No, we're, we're going to let ladies go first today. We got we got Robin, Mandy, and Rochelle. Um, it's yes. ladies' first day. You betcha. We're evenly balanced now. Okay, Robin, Mandy, Rochelle, what's going on in your business? Why is it that the ladies are shy this morning? If, if they're not talking. Long, I'm going to I'm going to fill the time. Okay, I got not... I got one. I got yeah, one. Go Here ahead. we go. I love what you just said there, Frank, that it's a, it's a two way street and we really do need it both. And it's not enough for me to hand out my cards like Johnny Appleseed, although I do that. Um, I, I need to be getting their digits um, and, and staying in flow with them. <clears throat> the, the, I'm reminded of a, of a, of a thought that, it, and it goes to prayer. And that is this, that sometimes we think, oh, I decided I needed to pray and, and I prayed this morning and, and you would say to me, oh, that, that's good, Kevin. Yeah, you, you, you really took the initiative there. But we believe that all prayers start with God, that God literally hit the ball across our way first. He invites us. And when, we, when I get the idea, I think I'll pray today, I'm responding to his call. And I, and I, I say this as, as a back and forth, you know, so that, oh, they're responding to your card by, by saying, hey, Frank, we want you to list our house, but, but you got it to them first, right? You took yes. that initiative first, whether it was through your door, uh, door baggies or, or whatever. And um, so I got two calls yesterday. I was blessed. One was from a um, uh, pastor at our church and um, they, um, they need to buy um, they have another priest that's going to be moving out and and uh, we need to buy a house so we help us buy this house a small house townhouse and um, we have another realtor in the parish and and he said you know i don't know how to do this and everything and i said don't you worry about it we uh realtors work together all the time and yes. we most certainly can do it between the two of us and you'll get double good service and we'll work out the numbers don't you worry about a thing um so that was that and number two was I had a friend um, call and say, hey, my folks passed away and we got some land in Florida. We need to sell. I don't know what to do. We got these estate issues. And in very short order, I, I have lined up a, a top notch EXP icon agent named Amber Nardino. I've met Amber at, um, at Build and uh, at prior events because going to events is important. And, um, and she is quite keen on helping uh, this client. And so those are two, and they just came to me. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say it's the fedora. You say, where did that come from? I'm gonna say it's the fedora and or the, 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 the crazy little door magnet. But you know, um, me and me and Tom Brimer, the only realtors that are still driving around with door magnets. A lot of realtors these days do not have anything on their car, um, and, and I do. And, and I met a realtor last week. He literally had on the side of his car a little plastic uh, container with his business cards. You could walk up to his car in a parking lot and grab a business card. Wow. This dude had the marketing down. So watch out, world. But there you go. So, Kevin, I'm going to uh, – Jason, we'll, I'll throw the ball to you here in just a second. I want to follow up on something before I forget it. 
your your priest came to you a little discombobulated because there were two realtors and and he didn't know how to handle that and you handled it beautifully and i want to say i have done that in real life as well when somebody's like well i don't know what to know my cousin my sister my neighbors or real estate agent and i've said something like what you said but i go i went a little bit further i said oh no problem this is a cooperative industry i can list it and represent you the seller she can bring the buyer and get paid on the other side. Yep. So there is absolutely an opportunity for both of us to help you with this real estate transaction. Now she's going to be competing with 45,000 other people and with me as the listing agent, but there is something about that dialogue that just emotionally releases the seller to say, oh, oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Okay, we'll list with you and then move forward. It has absolutely uh, worked for me. All right, Jason, your mic is on. What's on your mind? Oh, I was just listening to you guys. Um, I've got one client that I'm working with. It's kind of a, a difficult situation for the price point, but I think we're getting there. Uh, we're looking at a house in the, he's a younger gentleman, so he's mid twenties. So we're trying to find him a house under 200,000, which is challenging as you, you know, uh, most investors come in and snap those houses up, but I finally found one. Uh, I think we're probably going to write a contract on it at some point this week. So that's, that's a big win for me this week. Well, congratulations, Jason. That's awesome. Um, I wanted to add one more thing. All these things, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of getting back into the game purposefully uh, into uh, real estate sales um, because in my new role, I'm going to be, uh, I'm, I'll be serving 9,000 agents and I feel like I need a refresh on my actual street level experience. And, and the XP said, we want you to sell real estate. So I'm going to um, do a little bit more and more of it, but something else came up that I want to make a big point that will help you guys. Um, when these former neighbors called me last week to talk about selling their home, they clearly had interest in me. Uh, they wouldn't have called me, wouldn't have saved my card for six plus years. But then they said this, well, Frank, we've heard that there are some realtors out there who will sell our house for free if we let them, you know, help us buy a new home. And that you're going to hear that you're going to hear language like that. If not mm -hmm. those exact words, they're going to be hinting about a discount or what can you do to help us. Right. And I would encourage you to think about that in advance. Don't be caught flat footed. Don't be shocked, surprised, unless that's part of your strategy. Like what? <laughs> Nobody mm -hmm. ever asked me that. <laughs> like a doctor or lawyer. Are you crazy? Get out of here. You know, some realtors do that. That is that is their response, of mm -hmm. their, their planned response. But I, I'm always willing to contribute financially, particularly if there are two transactions. And if mm -hmm. they said, if they tell me they already have another option, then I'm going to meet or beat it. I'm never going to let um, a, a, a lesser commission keep me from getting some commission. You know, I'm going to do the deal as long as it, it justifies the time that's going to be involved. And uh, in this case, they wanted me to get paid by the builder of the home they're they're purchasing and then give them a discount on the listing and i said absolutely i always do that for my closest friends and family so i would be happy to do it for you but it just took the objection right off the table right i'm going to represent them on the purchase of a larger home than what they're selling you know it's still going to be a 12 14 thousand dollar commission there might be a bonus from the builder as well why am I going to jeopardize that right. uh, in, in a vain effort to try to get a full commission on two transactions? Because they basically already told me, that essentially, if I couldn't help them in that way, that they were going to go to somebody else. Okay, So there's a lot of people who get on stages in the real estate industry, and they talk really tough and be bold and get up there and defend every penny you're worth it. Well, yeah, I'd love to make 28000 on this deal. Yeah, who wouldn't? You know, that'd be awesome. But is that realistic? Not in every situation. So don't don't look going for the gold and losing all of it. Keep you from getting the silver silver medal still spins. Yep.
Okay. Thanks for sharing that. Frank, did, did, have you told everybody on the call what your new role is? Because I think, um, you know, you were going to tell us live on Monday and then. Oh, yeah. So you, you, you may want to you may want to reiterate that for folks. Sure. Yeah. Because not everybody reads my emails. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I read most of them. Yeah. I sent an email out to everybody on Monday begging off from class because I was sick and then sharing the news but yes i've accepted a position as a managing broker with exp of texas um my, i'll be doing the same thing that michael hughes does um, which is basically serve as a help desk for exp agents in texas uh, the work will all be done remotely um, and remotely means right here um, i'll be coming to work every day in my office as now at our woodlands campus and uh, I'll, sometimes I'll be in EXP world answering questions when y'all log in to come and say, well, you know, what do I do in this scenario? Or what does this paragraph mean? What is a subsidence district? I'll be answering those kind of questions. And then I'll be on the phone duty. Uh, the managing brokers rotate weekend responsibility coverage. So on some Saturdays, I'll be doing that. They want their managing brokers to teach as often as possible. And so I'm probably going to take a more active role in teaching uh, CE classes, uh, particularly the mandatory classes. And I'll be doing that in venues all over the Houston area. So I'm pretty excited about it. And um, it's going to keep me anchored right here where we're going to have uh, the most fantastic real estate company in Houston with the best coffee in Houston. So dang right. Dang right. Well, you've always been the best broker I've known. So I'm very happy for you. And yeah, it's something you could do with your eyes closed. And um, I'm just very excited about that. Yeah. Well, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that. So I don't yet know what it means for this. EXP wants their managing brokers to be serving the larger realtor community. And so they might be real happy for me to do this and they might give me access to the EXP database to invite 9,000 other agents right. and invite agents who are not part of EXP. Or they may say, no, Frank, we got other plans for you. I, I don't know, but I yeah. should find out everything on Monday. That's when I start work. I go to orientation for half a day and I think I'll get a real good sense then of uh, what, what the range of possibilities are and what my flexibility yeah. is. But my my suggestion, you. yeah, my suggestion on that one is, is have um, uh, a couple, have backups for every aspect of your technology so that, so that if you are going to be doing Zoom calls and things like this on the bigger stage, that you've got laptop A and laptop B is on the shelf behind you and you got headset A and headset B because uh, I've been on enough of the, world and different things and sometimes it gets hiccupy um yeah. and hey you could be like elon musk and, and blow up your giant rocket this morning so he already did that so whatever <laughs> technology problems we have are small potatoes right so uh exp has already sent me a brand new uh super laptop computer headset all i mean they just they've got me set up so hopefully it's good. all good stuff i have a proposed oh. topic can i can i raise a topic Oh, yeah, I was just going to open it up again. Go right ahead, Kevin. Again, um, the general logic is that um, a house that has been updated is worth more. But I want to explore that in a little bit of detail. How much more? Is it worth 10% more? Is it worth 50% more? Um, and uh, it, it pertains to a listing that I have right now, and I can't... Uh, readily put my finger on uh, any uh, industry stats and whatnot. You know, on one hand, you've got these real estate gurus running around Houston saying, oh, you just go and buy a $500,000 house for 250 and then you spend 50 painting it and you sell it for six. And I'm like, what planet are you on, right? So there's, yes. there's that. And then on the other hand, there is the reality, uh, and, and I certainly I, I know that if you spend 100 grand on a pool, you're not going to get 100 grand more for the house. Hopefully, you have fun swimming. That's what pools are for. But where do we look for um, dollars to uh, to to account for light updating versus a total remodel, 
share some share some gold on this one, if you would, Frank and and the others here. Yeah. So the um, the National Home Builders Remodelers Association. What I'm I'm making that up as I go, but it's something like that. They publish an annual report that tells you exactly what percentage spent on various remodel projects will return on a future sale. So for example, if you update a kitchen and spend 10 grand, what does that do to the, the market value of the home? Shockingly, in almost every case, it returns less than 100% of what you spent. Mm -hmm. There are some exceptions. And interestingly, the last time I saw this report, the biggest impact item was a replacement or refinishment of the front door. Now, that's not a big expense item. But again, if you think about it, what does that mean? It's first impression. And, and typically, first impression kind of gives you a hint of what the rest of the home is like. Um, I'm, I've got another active client, a seller who's not listed yet, but they've been talking to me about getting ready to list. And one of their questions yesterday was, Frank, we've gotten two bids on our front landscaping, one a $30,000 you know, redo or a $5,000 refresh. Which of those do you think we should take, if either, in order to go get ready to go on the market? Well, <laughs> the 30,000, there's no way they're going to get 30,000 in landscaping. Their landscaping doesn't look bad now. So there's no way it's going to add 30,000 in value to the home. But there it is. Is that it? You found it. That's Come one. on. That's fantastic. Net cost versus value. Well, we just put the hound dog on the scent and you found it. So that's probably not the one I was thinking of. It doesn't sound familiar, but there, I'm sure there are a number of organizations who do it and you obviously have tapped into one. What that does, if you'll familiarize yourself with that and just look through it, it really makes you an expert when talking to sellers in particular, because they're the ones who are going to be asking you about you know, hey, we may move in three years. Should we invest 50000 in a pool? Are we going to get that back? They're the ones who ask those kind of questions. Okay. Right. Yep. And Robin weighed in there. Very nice. Everson Cooper. Everson Cooper. Everson Cooper. Okay. And you found another one, Kevin, Home Remedy Houston. <clears throat> Very nice. See, it's all out well, there on Mr. Google. I'll share, I'll share one. So the other one is that there is a company that that helps with this and it's called Curbio. And Curbio yep. is more than just a remodeling company because they want to insinuate themselves in the deal and finance it and get paid at closing. Um, and so I spoke with the Curbio uh, yesterday and they sent me and I described to them where we are with the quote. But again, they they go to me and they say, what do I think the current value is? And what do I think the after repair value will be with improvement A or improvement B? And um, I'll just tell you the numbers I gave. I have a house listed right now. And um, I've heard from a, a, another realtor that it might be um, that it's it's not been updated. And, and yet the pricing might be aggressive for not being updated. And um, so I estimated that with the updates, it might be worth 30 grand more. Well, Curbio comes back and says, well, the updates will cost 24 grand. So I think I see what they're doing. If you get what I'm, what my, if you get what I'm saying. Um, and that was uh, 7,500 for painting and 165 for um, new countertops and a new suite of appliances in the kitchen. So 16 grand for, appliances and a countertop. And again, while you could probably, I could do it cheaper, um, there is a value obviously in having Curbio be the project manager, do it all. And the homeowner doesn't pay in the meantime, because some homeowners, they're at the point, they're like, no way, I ain't paying you a nickel. And, um, you know, they're in that mindset. Um, so I haven't used Curbio, but I'm playing with them. And if I'm not careful, I'm going to learn something about this subject and I'll have something to share in a, in a week or two of, 
because right now I'm legitimately asking the questions, but uh, there you go. So what I might suggest, and this is for everybody on the call, make a short video, go Facebook live with it and say, Hey guys, I know that many of you may be interested in selling your home, but you want to get top dollar, uh, in this market, but you know, you need some repairs done. Uh, maybe a roof replacement, landscape refresh, house needs to be repainted and you don't ha have the cash available or don't want to spend it on those repairs. I have a vendor partner who will cover all of those costs for you. Even if it's extensive remodeling, they will use their money to pay for everything, get the project done and then take payment at closing out of the proceeds from the sale. If that's something that you'd be of interest in, let me know and I'll make a connection for you. That's the kind of unique service that a real estate agent can offer that is really going to get people's attention. Again, we're always talking about differentiation, being the purple cow and being able to offer something like that, literally somebody else's money to fix up their home and not take payment until closing. I mean, that's a, that's an incredible win. Right. Love it, Kevin. Anything else? So I, I begged off on Monday from teaching because I got extremely sick on Sunday afternoon, continued into Monday morning. I was fine on Tuesday, but guess what happened on Tuesday? My wife got sick, oh. very sick. And unlike me, it, it was not a 16 or an 18 hour bug. Hers is continuing today into day three. And our daughter has gotten sick as well. So both of them are home alone. And in uh, Abby's in need of encouragement to eat and drink. She won't eat or drink on her own. So I need to head over to her house and try to get her some food and get her hydrated and then get home and <laughs> provide some more moral support to my wife as she goes through this. So I am going to be available today to help if I can help anybody with anything, but I do need to scoot and take care of those uh, priorities this morning. I appreciate you guys jumping on. I'm going to post this on our YouTube channel. A, a number of you jumped in at about the 10 minute mark, which is just when I finished my amazing message on <laughs> seeds. And, um, and how powerful it is and what a money-making concept it is. So you may want to go back and catch those first 10 minutes. Um, I will be in touch with you guys after Monday. <coughs> I know what my schedule is going to be and let you know if we're going to be able to continue this at this time in this format or if we're going to have to be flexible and shuffle a little bit. Okay. Appreciate you guys logging in. Appreciate all the wisdom and the sharing. And uh, Rochelle? Yeah. I just want to say congratulations to you, Frank, and I hope your family feels better, and I'm glad you're better. Well, thank you, Rochelle. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm glad mine was over quick because it, it was a nasty one. It hit hard and fast. And so, yeah, I appreciate your uh, good wishes and prayers, and God bless all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.